Welcome to this basics episode on the Ajax, the locomotive which may or may not have had the largest driving wheels ever made. And this brings to an end our mini-series on unusually or perhaps obnoxiously large driving wheels. Ajax was built by Mather Dixon and Company of Liverpool for the fledgling 7 feet gauge Great Western Railway. Ajax was one of 20 or so locomotives built by outside contractors for the Great Western to a very peculiar design specification indeed. A design specification issued by Brunel himself, and despite having never designed a railway locomotive, he tore up or at least ignored all the accepted wisdom and empirical learning about the railway locomotive. Even the most die-hard Brunel fans have to concede this was a mistake. Brunel had studied what he termed the narrow gauge and was dissatisfied with the performance of the railway locomotive as it then existed in 1836. He thought narrow gauge locomotives unsteady, that they were wasteful of steam and were not made to a standard uniform plan, instead being built to rough specifications issued by the railway company in terms of boiler pressure, cylinder dimensions and driving wheel size. Thereafter, each individual builder was left to their own devices to build a locomotive, which was usually some variation on the Stevenson norm. So when designing locomotives for the broad gauge, Brunel therefore issued precise and exacting specifications, And these specifications show he simply did not understand the railway locomotive. So, let's take a look. Having seen trains on the Liverpool and Manchester Railway running at speeds of 25 to 30 miles an hour, Brunel specified a, quote, standard velocity, end quote, of 30 miles per hour, whatever that meant. He then specified a piston speed, not exceeding 280 feet per minute. This was incredibly low and was less than half of the piston speed of contemporary railway locomotives. There was an advantage to this, however, as a low piston speed would reduce wear on cylinders, pistons and valves, and also reduce the speed and thus force of the various reciprocating masses, which in the days before balance weights were added to the driving wheels would help stop the locomotive knocking itself and the track to pieces. In order to use such a low piston speed, short stroke cylinders would have to be used. The Liverpool and Manchester Railway had, in 1836, built a series of 12 short stroke locomotives, but they all proved to be failures due to very high fuel consumption and being unable to keep to scheduled time. Timothy Hackworth on the Stockton and Darlington also built a short stroke locomotive, but aware that a short stroke meant that the engine was running to mechanical disadvantage, he introduced an intermediary lever as a force multiplier. Suffice to say, that locomotive remained a one-off. Brunel obviously thought he knew better. Next was the weight. Brunel specified a maximum weight, including fuel and water, of 10.5 tonnes if carried on six wheels, and a maximum of eight tonnes if carried on four wheels. Now, to put this in context, Robert Stevenson's planet of 1830 weighed nine tonnes, and she's absolutely tiny. Lion, built in 1838, the same year as the Ajax, weighs 18 tonnes carried on six wheels. Brunel's locomotives would have been absurdly small. The most conservative part of the design was a maximum boiler pressure of 50 psi, exactly the same as specified at the Rainhill Trials of 1829 and as used by Richard Trevithick for the last 30 odd years. Lines like the Liverpool and Manchester, however, although officially running at 50 psi, were using 70 psi at the time But when the board of directors found this out, the proverbial midden hit the windmill. These design specifications were almost impossible to work with. It meant locomotive designers would have to use short stroke cylinders. But in order to achieve a speed of 30 miles per hour, 
they would have to use very large driving wheels of 7 to 10 feet diameter, the largest driving wheels at the time being at 6 feet. But such large wheels were very heavy, which meant in adopting large wheels for a 30 mile an hour standard velocity, it meant the designers would have to save weight somewhere else. And that invariably meant reducing the size of the boiler. These meant these Brunel locomotives were incredibly underpowered, thanks to big heavy wheels, small boilers and a lack of adhesive weight, they would have struggled to move themselves, let alone any useful load. Ajax was one of six locomotives built by Martha Dixon for the Great Western. She was delivered in December 1838 and under running trials in 1839. A second sister engine, the Mars, apparently followed to the same design. This pair, Ajax and Mars, were supposedly built with wheels 10 feet in diameter, the largest ever made. I say supposedly, as the evidence is contradictory. Arguing in favour of 10 feet diameter driving wheels is Daniel Gooch, the Great Western Locomotive Superintendent at the time, who notes in his diary he had two locomotives with 10 feet diameter wheels. Brunel himself noted to the Gage Commissioners in 1845 how he had not two, but three locomotives with 10 feet wheels. Archibald Sturrock, who had worked for the Great Western before becoming locomotive superintendent of the Great Northern Railway, recalled in his dotage there were two locomotives with 10 feet driving wheels in his youth, one of which had a geared drive, and he last saw dumped in a siding at Swindon in 1840. George Augustus Seacon, the nom de plume of George Knox, historian and editor of the Railway Magazine, in his 1895 history of the Great Western Railway, describes Ajax and Mars as being built with 10 feet diameter driving wheels, and he also claims that Ajax was streamlined, with the front end shaped like the prow of a boat to help her cut through the wind but there's no other evidence for his claim. Game, set and match you'd think to Ajax with 10 feet wheels, but no. A veritable war of words erupted in all the leading technical journals of the day. Heading the charge against Noakes was his rival Clement Stretton, who gleefully jumped on a number of Noakes mistakes. Stretton notes that Ajax was built with driving wheels a mere 8 feet in diameter, and in this he was supported by other historians, engineers, and indeed old workers from Mather, Dixon and Company. He was also supported in this by a very youthful Henry Greenley, who would go on to become the most successful and eminent engineer and designer of miniature steam locomotives, including those on the Romney, Hythe and Dimchurch. The trump card to all of this was Stretton presenting the Mather Dixon and Company specification for Ajax and its sister engines, Planet and Mercury, stating that all three of them had 8 feet diameter driving wheels. And this was verified by William Deans, the chief mechanical engineer of the Great Western Railway, who located the works drawing of Ajax conclusively showing 8 feet wheels. So whilst the size of the wheels of Ajax are controversial, their method of construction is known. Ajax was supplied with unique iron wheels made from 3 16 inch boiler plate and made according to an 1833 patent of Benjamin Hick of Bolton. These disc wheels were riveted together from segments and were hollow. They were convex in profile, being 7 inches wide at the hub and three and a half inches wide at the tyre, supported with stays in between, rather like a firebox. The plate disc wheels were seven feet six inches in diameter without the tyre or flange. The rim was three inches thick, made from a single wrought iron bar, 33 feet long. According to one old workman from Mather Dixon and Company, who presented drawings of these wheels, during their construction, one of the stays was dropped inside one of these great wheels, and from then on it rattled around on the inside. Despite all her oddities, Brunel was impressed. 
He wrote, Within the last ten days I have had several opportunities examining the working of the Ajax. All the gearing of the engine appears to me to work very smoothly, indicating sufficient strength and good workmanship. There is no priming and plentiful supply of steam within a train consisting of three different railway carriages, three loaded carriage trucks, and a horse box. An average speed of thirty miles per hour was maintained exclusive of stoppages, and it appears to me that when the engine was better known and understood by the engineer that the performance would be improved, as in that experiment there was an excess of steam, but the engine appeared throttled. During the high gales of last week the engine has been much more delayed. To what extent this delay is to be attributed to want of power or to increased resistance from the surfaces exposed, I am not yet prepared to say. The workmanship is very superior, and the consumption of coke singularly small. There is some trifling alterations required in unimportant parts of the engine, but which can be better done when it is thrown off work for a day or two. Unfortunately for all of Brunel's high hopes, Ajax was laid up by the end of the year and was disposed of sometime around 1845. So if the size of the driving wheels of Ajax are the subject of some dispute, then which locomotive categorically did run with 10 feet wheels? That locomotive was the Hurricane, designed by Thomas Elliot Harrison, engineer of the Stanhope and Tyne Railroad. And you can find out more about that line in this book by Rob Langham. In order to meet Brunel's peculiar design criteria, Harrison built an articulated locomotive. In fact, he built three of them. Two for the broad gauge, the Thunderer and the Hurricane. And as recent research shows, a third named Projector for the Stanhope and Tyne. In these three designs, one finds an echo of Matthew Murray's articulated locomotive of 1825, which had the boiler carried on one set of wheels and the cylinders on the other. And this was to reduce axle load to prevent damage to the track. Hurricane used enormous 10 feet diameter driving wheels. They were driven by a pair of cylinders measuring 16 by 20 inches. Steam was conveyed to the engine unit using flexible steam pipes from the boiler unit. The carrying wheels were 4 feet 6 inches diameter. Coal and water was carried on a conventional tender, making Hurricane less a locomotive and more a procession. Suffice to say, despite reports of having achieved a speed of 100 miles per hour, Hurricane was not a success and never entered revenue earning service on the Great Western Railway. But for all that, she did have the largest authenticated driving wheels of any locomotive, and for that she deserves to be remembered. So those have been the basics on the Ajax and the Hurricane, both of which contend for the honour, however dubious, of having had the largest pair of driving wheels ever made. I hope you have enjoyed this video and this series of themed episodes, and if you have, please like, share and subscribe, and I'll see you all next time on Rail Story. <laughs>